Hi, this is Kurt Barone, and welcome to another edition of File Law Roundup. Um, okay. So now, this is this is a great one because I, I'm reading Los Angeles, but I'm thinking Hawaii. Um, <laughs> so I, so here we have a court in Los Angeles has dismissed a case as against Boeing and Boeing's fire suppression contractor um, from the Woolsey fire litigation. This was, uh, was this 18? Yeah, this is 18, um, the fire. And look, I, I'm going to summarize this. There's, there's a lot to talk about. Only so much is piques a lot of people's interest, but the court dismisses it basically in all these cases because, it, well, we've got Boeing, a landowner, and we've got their contracted employee, the fire department. Let's talk about the fire department first. Both of them, well, as against a fire uh, suppression contractor, the fire department, basically, they say, listen, you didn't owe a duty to anybody. And that just brings up normal duty cases you and I have talked about a million times mm -hmm. that a fire department does not owe any special one-on-one -on -one duty to any any general member of the public, even when you call 911 and say, help my house is on fire, they don't yet owe you a duty. In I'm going to say most states, because I don't know if every state has special no, duty not, rules. Not, not every state does, right? So, so I'll say probably the, the most states, and clearly California does, um, in where this is, um, unless there's a one-on-one -on -one duty. So unless, for example, to everyone, you pull up to a fire and you see someone about to jump you know, off their balcony, you say, no, 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 don't jump. I'm coming for you. Stay there. And then you never go. Right. You're not you're just like, yeah, I'm going out for pizza. Um, so that's what it takes. It takes that one on one contact and relying on you making a promise that you're going to do something that you don't do. That's what it takes to form a special duty, a normal duty. A fire department doesn't owe a normal duty to everybody such that you can sue them for negligence because they breach their duty to you in providing fire protection. So here the court as against a fire suppression says a couple of things. One, they don't owe a duty to the general public. Two, they were contracted by Boeing, right? This, this is their contract. There's no, I'd say privity. There's no relationship with anybody. So the fire department is out of this um, because they owe no duty to anybody. So that's that's pretty easy. And that is where it should go. Um, and look, this is a big fire, mm -hmm. right? To, to sue a fire department that you didn't put it out, you didn't fight it properly, no way, right? We're, we're just not going to start allowing that. Uh, every fire department would be out of business as a policy matter because, you know, leaving up to a jury is how we couldn't save property or whatever, just not going to do. Okay, so the the next in really interesting part is against Boeing, even though this is more of a fire service podcast. Um, but Boeing, um, they said, listen, you allowed a fire, I think is what they tried to say, is you allowed a fire on your land and then encroached onto our land, spread onto our land, and the court's not going to have that either. The court's saying, listen, you didn't start the fire. You didn't allow the fire, right? You didn't, you weren't careless in the fire starting. Um, so I'm going to, dis the court dismisses trespass and negligence and nuisance claims because you have to show that what you did was wrong. And here they, they said they didn't do anything. There's just a fire. Now, what's Partly interesting, though, is you have to think Hawaii, because I want to move this to Hawaii. Remember, in Hawaii, what they're, the lawsuits are saying is the electrical company knew that they could start the fire with their electrical lines. That's very different than what's happening here. That allegation, right, is the electrical company could have stopped it, and they caused it, and they knew they were going to cause it, because there was a fire earlier that day, I think, or that week. Um, so I... I look at this as if if you're looking at Hawaii and say, oh, it's going to be the same thing as Hawaii. No, it's not. Because they are at least as against the electric company, those claims are they could have stopped it and they started it. Not so with Boeing. Boeing, you just own the land, right? And there, this lawsuit's still going on against others. Oh, yeah. It's going on against the utility, which we see a common theme in these cases is that the, the fire was caused by an electrical spark caused by a wire that comes down or comes in contact with trees. Okay. So I, I want to connect this <coughs> to another, <coughs> excuse me, another um, suit that is going on that we've talked about here. Brad, I'm not sure that you and I have talked about it, but uh, it's one that uh, we're, I'm familiar with uh, in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, where the, the town or the city of Gatlinburg was basically destroyed by a wildland fire that started in a national park. 
The allegations in that uh, suit go to the Park Service and their failure to warn the uh, folks outside the district that this fire was coming and people didn't have an opportunity. There's a number of people killed, massive destruction of a city, of a small, small city. Um, and uh, it was on a hilltop and, uh, you know, the fire just burned up the uh, the side of the hill and destroyed the city. But um, that case, you'll if you get my newsletter, uh, one of the articles in Beyond the Blog you'll see this week um, has to do with some decision making in that and some of the allegations, some of the uh, the uh, judicial um, narrowing of the allegations in that case. But a uh, very interesting case. So um, I think when you start, like, you know, in, in this case, if they had um, been able to prove that something that Boeing did, um, such as not reporting it to the local fire department and not getting resources involved or trivializing it, saying, no, 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 we've got it, we've got it, we don't need any outside resources, you might be in a different situation, but uh, here, just being the property owner uh, and having a fire that you didn't start, right. um, th there's really no duty to third parties who may be injured a as a result. Interesting, interesting area. And obviously, as you suggest, with the Hawaii fires, uh, the Maui fires, um, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this kind of uh, you know, decision making related to who is going to ultimately be responsible. So I, I do want to ask you, are have you because you've been following all these cases for many years, are you yeah. seeing in I, obviously we're seeing more wildfires, you know, go on for whatever reason, but are you seeing an uptick in these types of litigation? Because they're yeah. not successful generally. Well, I I kind of go back to um uh, when I was in law school, um, there was a, a lot of tort cases against auto manufacturers and uh, over crash worthiness, and they were largely not successful. Go back even before that, uh, lawsuits against cigarette uh, uh, companies, uh, largely not successful, right? Right up until... <laughs> They are. The, the attorneys learned what to do. They lost the first hundred cases. OK, but there are these law firms out there and they focus on this and they they so they lose one. Oh, OK, we learned a lesson. Oh, oh, we learned another one. We learned another one to the point where the tobacco industry is. You can see where it is. Right. The auto industry, as a result of the plaintiffs, plaintiff bars uh, sure. actions, uh, forced the auto industry to do things like um, anti-lock brakes, uh, airbags, not optional. You know, you don't have to right. pay an extra three thousand dollars. It's built in because they were tired and and crash worthiness standards and all the rest of that. So um, I see that model being applied here in the wildland. And that's another reason why they've really zeroed in on the utilities and they put some utilities into bankruptcy as a result of this. Um, you know, and so I think the the word is out now to utilities that you've got to get your act together and you can't be worried about um, trying to trying to get uh, executive bonuses and different things and trying to, you know, stay within your budget and all that uh, at the expense of public safety right. um, that you have got to you've got to start addressing this stuff. I, uh, I so, would, I, I'm sorry, I, I would almost say this is may start to be akin to potholes. You'll see where I'm going in a second. So <laughs> potholes, there's no liability until you call one in. <laughs> I'm wondering whether you're going to see these third party naturalists, you know, go out and say danger, call it in danger, call it in. Now you've changed it because if now that you have knowledge and you had time as a utility company to cut back the trees and you don't, if you don't, right, mm -hmm. then there could be liability. It's not yeah, a, you owe a general duty to this massive area. It's I pointed out a problem. You had reasonable time. You did nothing like it. Absolutely. Um, and, and there's also equipment uh, and the equipment is not cheap. OK, but when a wire goes down, there's equipment that will de-energize, you know, okay. uh, or you can say, well, we can't afford that, in which case, guess what? <laughs> right. You're going to look at uh, the executive bonuses. This to one, see I, could I, I just want to I want to get this right. This this particular fire, the Woolsey fire, there was uh, like twenty nine thousand uh, acres or something. Right? One thousand six hundred and forty three structures. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and kill three people. So you are not going to have something like that happen and you're not going to be liable. 
Right. Um, or at least, you know, at least so, sued. And, but, but. Right. So you can save a little money on your hardware and your different things and not have all these safety features built in, just like the car manufacturers. OK, uh, you can try to save some money on one end or and if you do, congratulations, you're going to get your annual bonus. Congratulations to the president of the utility and all his staff. Uh, but guess what? A couple of years later down the road, that decision may pay another, you know, uh, may have to uh, uh, result in another problem for your organization. So wait, wait till the fire departments, if they're smart, I got to tell you, if you had time and you could walk the power lines, which would be right, very tough for a fire department to do. But if you pre plan the power lines and called in, hey, there's a power line here in connection with a whatever, then the fire department could sue for overtime and all those things. Um, well, and look, yeah. I think I think the states can do something. I think the states, and some have, New York does a little bit, where they have statutes to say, if there's a type of response that takes so much overtime from the fire department, somebody has to pay. Yeah, California they has could that. legislate a solution if, if it needs a solution to the utility company saying, well, if a line starts because a utility, electrical line, whatever, absolute... It doesn't matter about fault. The utility's got to pay for the fire department. Yeah. That and would at least be a way to cause yeah, some action. Cal California has that. Uh, no, number of other states have that in terms of cost, re cost uh, recovery. So, yeah.